Back now on our special edition of Try It Today with our special guest, Pat McCrory, former gubernatorial candidate, possibly a future one. Uh, we have a few minutes left in the show. Pat, um, this year earlier, the National Mayors uh, Association urged President Obama to pull out of all the wars, not for any moral reason, whatever. They just said, as mayors, we don't think we can afford, you know, trillions and trillions of dollars on these uh, wars and being the world's policeman. You're a former seven-term mayor of Charlotte. How would you have stood with them? I used to be mad at the uh, National Conference of Mayors. I was on the Board of Trustees whenever they got into Washington business because we have enough problems at the local level. And what's kind of ironic about that resolution, I'm having some real issues with the war in Libya, all three. And listen, I have a, a relative, my cousin's son is actually in the Navy SEAL group, and thankfully he wasn't on the helicopter. Right. And we got a call from my cousin Paul and said thankfully he wasn't on. So it's, 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 it hits at home. But the fact of the matter is, they're also recommending what to do with the money. And, of course, all the mayors said, we want the money. Right. And right now, I think the money needs to go toward the debt because we can no longer afford to live on a credit card. But we shouldn't be and in so many wars I either, think, right? I, absolutely. We, we cannot be, take all the responsibilities. You have countries, booming countries like Brazil, that are not taking any of the military responsibility. We're still in Korea, and there are some recent things going on in Korea. Yeah. I mean, we cannot afford to stay in places forever. Let and me, let me, sooner or later, you know, we've learned lessons. It goes back to our own Revolutionary War. You, people from another country cannot permanently occupy. Uh, the intent was good, but um, right now, I don't know what the strategy is at the federal level. And I'll tell you the other sad thing about all three wars. No one's talking about it. No. Well, who wants to? Because the, it's embarrassing. No it, one's talking. But the... the People, including relatives of mine, are out there risking their life every day. Yeah, and, and we, we need to bring It should be on home. the news every single night. Excellent. And someone needs to explain what the objective is, because I think we've lost the objective. There is no objective, and I just wish we could get those boys and girls home safely. Uh, a lot of liberals are frightened by a voter ID law. I'm very liberal, and yet I'm not so sure I'm against it. What's the big deal about requiring proof of citizenship in order to vote? It's not even proof of citizenship. <laughs> it's, it's a photo ID proving that you, live that you live in the area that you say you live. That's all it does. And not only that, but there's a thing in the, that the governor vetoed, the voter ID ballot, which says there's a provisional ballot that you can go ahead and vote if you don't have an ID, and it'll be checked on later. Listen, you have to have an ID to get Sudafed in North Carolina. Oh, you yeah. have to have an ID to get a tattoo in North Carolina by state law. Right. You have to have an ID to get to inside the governor's mansion right. in North Carolina. Well, maybe that should be changed. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't let so many people inside the governor's well, mansion. Well, even in the governor's office, you have to show an ID. But nothing If it's to... good enough for the governor's office, it's good enough for the voting booth in North Carolina. What? And I don't understand why um, the governor vetoed that, and we did not override that veto. But it will come back, and uh, I think it's common sense. Uh, quickly on this. I don't think it's a liberal or conservative issue no, either. No, but, but speaking of that, uh, I just, I hate the way how strident the Republican Party, I, I grew up as a Republican, I'm now an independent. My dad was Eisenhower's campaign director in North Carolina. Eisenhower's one of my heroes. 52. But we're not, the Republican Party has been hijacked. It's not Eisenhower. It's not, it's now it's yelling and screaming and being radical and not even knowing some of the facts when you go off half cocked and, and it seems like Tea Party, and they're controlling well, things. Well, I personally think it's all parties. I mean, this name calling on both sides has been embarrassing out of Washington. It, you know, you and I don't agree with all issues. But we respectfully disagree. I'm not going to call you an idiot for right. disagreeing me, with me on several issues that we talked about even today. Right. We respectfully disagree. But you're thinking, I'm an idiot. you're thinking I'm an idiot. No, He's thinking I'm not. It. I'm not thinking you're an idiot. I'm thinking there are fair arguments. Usually there's more than two arguments, usually. Usually there are three right. or four arguments on issues. And we've got to start having debates. And this thing where politicians say, I'm fighting for you. Politicians don't fight. <laughs> the only people fighting are the ones in Afghanistan or Iraq That's right. or Syria, right, or Libya, right Amen now. Amen to that. And this 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 thing of yelling and screaming and calling names, which the president has been engaged in, the Congress has been engaged in, is something that doesn't help. It doesn't help, and I haven't done it during my term. I have a few seconds left. Are you going to announce your run for governor? We hope to. We hope to. When my would that happen if you do it? Uh, most likely sometime after the November elections, at this is my thinking. I, listen, I, campaigns are far too long at this point in time. I, and 
I just think uh, if, if you announce too early, um, first of all, you could always change your mind, but second, people get tired of these long campaigns they and they get too expensive. And I'm not a wealthy individual. I can't loan my campaign any money and I have to work for a living like everyone else. We're going to collect in the studio. We're going to collect a million dollars for you. Just a, Richard and I are going to give you that uh, money in jail. If you Look, two give me a million dollars, I'll be going to jail yeah, shortly, well, and I'm well, not planning to do that. Well, we're trying to trip you up. <laughs> this, uh, Pat McCrory, thanks for doing this. Uh, whether thanks. you run or not, uh, you've been uh, in demand as a speaker about all these issues, and, and thanks for taking I look that. forward to coming back to... Uh, yeah. The triangle. Okay. Or, or the triad, I'm sorry. Or for both. Tran you well, come to both. I'm coming back to the triad for a transportation summit in a couple weeks. He is everywhere. He's everywhere. Look Thanks to for it. doing this. Thanks for watching this special edition with Pat McCrory. He is everywhere. You can see him everywhere. Triad, triangle, everywhere. This man is everywhere. And go hear him speak. Be back it is. From Jamestown. We'll see you next week.